Smartcast. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Gratitude is a place that actually enables us to see that and, and, and even to stand in our greatness, for you to be able to stand in your greatness. And it, it's a mindset, John. It, it really is a mindset of looking at one's success as a contribution of self and others. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. It is another beautiful day here in North Carolina. And this episode is brought to you by our sponsors, the Fraternity of Excellence, the Sasquatch Flag Company, and Jeremy Clevenger Fitness. These sponsors help me bring these shows to you each and every week, so I encourage you to click on their links below and check them out. I have another great show lined up for you today, but before we get started, I just want to remind you to check out the leadership books I've written on either Amazon or my website, johnsrenny.com. This year, I'm offering a new way to purchase all of my books for a discount. I've bundled the books into what I call the Qualified Leadership Series, and you get all three books for 15% off the individual prices. This offer is only available on my website, so check it out if you're looking to step up your leadership game this year. Also, I wanted to remind you that Deep Leadership is ranked as a top 100 management podcast in the U.S. and in the U.K., and I wanted to thank each and every one of you for listening in each week and sharing these episodes with your friends. You have helped this podcast grow into a top-performing show, so thank you very much. Well, that is it. Today, we're going to be talking about grateful leadership, and my guest is Steve Foran. Steve is the founder of Gratitude at Work, and he helps leaders and their teams be happier on the job by bringing more gratitude to their daily work. We sat down to talk about the four mindsets of a leader, how we can become more grateful, and how that will affect our teams. And I love this conversation. I know you will as well. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. I am joined by Steve Foran. Steve has a dream to create 1 billion happier people, and he's doing it one person at a time through his company, Gratitude at Work, which he founded in 2006. Steve helps leaders and their teams be happier on the job by bringing more gratitude to their daily work. He is the author of Surviving to Thriving, The 10 Laws of Grateful Leadership, and I'm excited to have him on the show to learn about the idea of grateful leadership. So, Steve, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here, John. Uh, look forward to our conversation here today, too. I am as well. It's a topic we haven't covered, um, and uh, I'm excited to learn from your experiences. And and, and I, I guess I wanted to start off and say, you know, you've been doing this research uh, on uh, gratitude for a long time, and you've been teaching the habits of, of gratefulness uh, for more than 16 years Tell us how this journey got started, because it's kind of interesting that you you went deep, deep in this uh, in this subject. Yeah, and I, you know my background training is electrical engineer <laughs> with an MBA, right? And you right. kind of crank those people out, like tur we turn them out around the right. world, right? Right. Um, and I was, I, I guess, to describe me, you know, twenty years ago, I described my, I would characterize myself as maybe this self-made man, self-made person. I did it on my own. I, th that was my mindset. And I came to this gradual realization. I didn't have a traumatic life experience or life altering moment. I, I didn't travel somewhere and experience or see yeah. something just very gradually. And I think the tipping point was our kids who are now young adults, uh, their first jobs were in a neighborhood coffee shop. 
And within four months of starting those jobs, working like four, five, six hours, seven hours a week, minimum wage, within four months, their bank accounts had accumulated more wealth than half of the world's population. Mm. Wow. And that struck me because I was thinking, you didn't do this all on your own. This is what I'm thinking, John. I didn't say that to the kids. We're so proud of them. And what I realized, I was really talking to myself. Mm. And it made me realize, oh, good Steve, your life has been handed to you on a silver platter. Mm. And it just brought this enormous sense of gratitude into my head, my heart. And so I did some research on it while I was in grad school. And then I looked at my honey. I said, hon, I think this is what I got to start doing now. <laughs> so that's not exactly electrical engineering. No, it's, but do you know what it is? Um, it is engineering. We're just engineering a different type of energy. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So yeah. Like, like you, I'm a engineer with an MBA, right? I shouldn't be in the leadership space. I shouldn't be, but I, but I, but I, it, it's interesting how we find ourselves here because you, you, t- you would think someone with that background like yourself would be all, you know, it's all, um, math, science, and, and, uh, and, you know, and products and, and, you know, and, and technology. But instead, you find yourself in the human emotion space, which is very interesting. It, it is. And, and John, you probably can appreciate this. The type of thinking that we learn systems, just, a, a, I don't know, I don't think engineers are necessarily unique in this, but we, we do have a, a certain approach to how we would look at systems model them and put frameworks together. I've done the same thing. That's really just applying those skills. And, and I think the other thing that, you know, for you listening, I I just want you to know, engineers, we do have hearts. Um, They're (laughs) dark charcoal gray, but we've got hearts. (laughs) They're there somewhere, right? (laughs) I love that. How would you best describe uh, grateful leadership? What's a, what's a way to think of it? It's a way to think of your or my success is um, it, it is a contribution of um, the inputs of others and the inputs of self. It's not we, we don't diminish anything that we do, any of our contributions. We don't diminish the contributions of others. We don't exaggerate the contributions of others. We don't exaggerate our own contributions. It's this balanced place of recognizing the, the, the giftedness, the goodness in life, both what oneself brings and what others bring. And so gr- gratitude is a place that actually enables us to see that and, and, and even to stand in our greatness, for you to be able to stand in your greatness. And if, it's a mindset, John. Um, to me, it's a mindset. Leadership is a lot about mindset. I'm not sure what your take is on it, but yeah, I, it, it really is a mindset of looking at one's success as a contribution of self and others. Yeah. Hmm. So, so you talk about a mindset. So, um, if we have this grateful mindset, how does that help us lead? You know, live a more inspired life, a more um, satisfied life, a, a life of impact? I don't know. How does that affect us when we, when we have a um, grateful mindset? How does that affect us as leaders, um, even in our life uh, in general? Yeah, there, there's a couple things. On the research side, we know that a grateful mindset, it, you know, we're more likely to, to achieve important life goals. We're happier. We're more optimistic. We have more um, social connections. There's all these benefits. Social science isn't, uh, hasn't proven how all that happens yet. We yeah. know the government, but all those mechanisms, we're not exactly sure. Yeah. I yeah. do have some ideas, though, you know, in terms of like your, your initial question about how does it help you show up as an inspiring leader? Mm. Uh, if you just kind of think of that, uh, how I describe what is grateful leadership is, you know, recognizing your own contributions, contributions of others. It that leads to this is even going to sound weird coming from an engineer, I think, but <laughs> a, a place of detachment. Do you know what I mean by that? When I say detached, like not 
No, I don't. I, I, I no, but I'm interested in your take. Yeah. So, so when I say detachment, um, I, I, uh, you know how when we have an idea, we love it so much, we got to make it go forward. Like in the plant, I, you know, when I was at the power utility, I had this idea for how we were going to redesign our the power lines, and my way was the way. Mm. I'm a, I'm so attached to the idea that one my idea that I'm not able to step back and incorporate the ideas and perspectives of others to I come see. up with something better, which we ended up doing because I was forced. To detach from my idea. Uh, I see. I see. So when we're in this place of like, we're, we're, we're more likely to be detached. We see the contributions of others and the contributions of self. And that leads to being non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. When I am not attached, I'm going to be less judgmental. And I believe in order for you and I and you listening to be inspiring an inspiring leader, we've got to part the whole judgment thing. That's mm -hmm. a key thing. So when you're detached, you're saying, let the best ideas win. I don't care where they come from. Uh, let the best, um, you know, direction, you know, decision happen, regardless of, of where the idea came from. So is that part of it is when you say detachment? So it's, you're just saying I'm you're taking away the ego part a bit, right? You're saying, in, you know, especially as a leader, I mean, our egos get us to where we're leading these organizations, right? But it, they also get us in trouble if we continue to push only our version of of the truth. So in, in a way, detachment allows us to put everybody in an equal playing field uh, and just take the best ideas to move forward. Is that similar to what you're talking about? It, it, it is. So, so this whole idea of attachment um, is, it, as you think of your purpose, right? As you think of your purpose, um, I believe that is the thing to be attached to. Mm. Like, it, it, think of the notion, would you want to live a long life or a shorter life? Mm. healthier life or an unhealthier life. If you could detach, like think as a human, if you could detach from that, what if living a shorter, unhealthier life helped you live your purpose, live out your purpose? Mm. So this idea of attachment is being attached to the highest ideal, the highest goal so if that uh, a utility pole design, if that was by being so attached to that, the only, the only reason I want to do that is if it leads me further to my end purpose in life, whatever I think that happens to be. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, for example, this podcast is the, the design to, you know, build a world with better bosses, Right. And so, but I don't say that I have the best ideas uh, and, and the best way to do it. I, I rely on the guests that, uh, that bring in, you know, all these different facets and ideas. And so as long as the goal, which is to build a world with better bosses, is fulfilled, then I'm happy to have people like you on the show to, that, that bring a, a, a fresh perspective on that. Right. So th th there's something to be attached to. So if bringing this guest or not having this guest, so, so as we think of, so, and to, so think of to be inspiring yeah. when we are attached to our higher purpose, detached from any of the other things in life that can get in the way, you know, draw the attention of our ego to, you know, and it's not that there's anything wrong with our ego and there, but, but to, to just be able to notice it and see it. I think it, for me, it serves me, it serves me well. Um, and it's not, it's not easy to, I'm not here saying, oh yeah, I always live this higher ideal every yeah, single day yeah. in my life. Right. Like this week, to, tonight, my grandson's supposed to come over. I forgot that I had the conversation with him and I got to apologize <laughs> to him when I see him tonight. I'm supposed to pick him up at school and I got, I, I booked other things into it. Mm. Um, so I'm going to own that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Interesting. I like it. I like it. It's something definitely something to uh, think about a little deeper here. Um, so your book uh, that I want to kind of dive into that a little bit is called Surviving to Thriving, The Ten Laws of Grateful Leadership. Um, when you wrote this book, what was the big idea that you wanted to get out into the world and who who was the audience that you wanted to get it to? Yeah, the, the audience is the, the, the first the big idea. And I I thought I knew what the big idea is when I started writing it. Yeah. And it was after I published it and my dad <laughs> said, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a gratitude practice. I realized that was really the big idea mm. because gratitude is a game changer for living a fulfilled uh, life where life is life feels like a playground. Mm. And but but really the the big idea is developing a practice around it so that you can do that. And we live in the most prosperous society. We live in the most prosperous times in human history. Yeah. And, you know, I'm looking at the global happiness reports. The Western world for the, is, is leading for the first time in history a decline, mm -hmm. predicting a decline in global happiness. And we in the West are leading it. And I, I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think you're right. We, it's, it's I mean, kind of going back to your mindset is uh, you could say um, uh, we have all these struggles, you know, uh, we have, we've post COVID, we've had all this change. We've got AI coming, we've got uh, uh, politics have gotten much more uh, vicious and, and social media is, you know, tearing us apart and, we feel lonelier than ever. And there's all these things you could say, you could point to, to say um, how terrible life is. But think about, you know, how the kind of lives that we live, you know, sometimes you hear the expression first world problems. You know, we, we, we exist in a very, in a time in history where there is a lot of peace and there are, there is a lot of prosperity. And, and so I think we, it, 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 and like you said, it's a sort of, how do you look at it? Um, do you look at it from a grateful perspective of, wow, look at all I have this morning, you know, uh, or do you look at it all the, all the, all the things that, that the news wants you to say is, you know, you should be worried about, you know, and, uh, I, I think you're, so you're on to something that's really important. And, and, um, it, it's, it's, it's this idea of how do you look at the, how do you look at your, your world and how do, and what perspective do you look at it with? It, it, tr it truly is. And gratitude is this perspective of finding the good. Mm -hmm. What is the good here? Yeah. Uh, because um, I, t I talk about what I, I call it the unrelenting force in, in the book. And it, it is constantly at work at you, at me, our friends, you listening, we watching. And it is pulling you back to a place of feeling like life is like a battleground. And it is the biggest piece of it is what psychologists call negative attribution bias, mm, which yes. is our yes. fixation on yeah. the negative. Yeah. And so when we expose ourselves to that all the time, guess what happens? That, that, that will dominate our mindset and it will, we will have a negative bias and we will believe that things are worse off and all these things when in fact, the opposite is actually true. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. Best-selling leadership author John S. Rennie knows this. That's why he's written a new book called You Have the Watch. It's a guided journal for leaders designed to take you through an entire year of leadership training. By the end of the year, you will master 50 of the most important leadership skills. If you want to have a greater impact on the results and people in your organization, go to youhavethewatch.com and pick up your copy today. 
This episode is brought to you by the Fraternity of Excellence. The Fraternity of Excellence is an online and real-world community for men who are looking to improve in all areas of their lives. The men of FOE are working together to become better husbands, fathers, and leaders at work and in their communities. They live by a simple philosophy, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Now, I've been a member for more than three years, and for me, I finally found a brotherhood of men that I was missing from my time in the military. Now, I love being around guys who are dedicated to becoming a better version of themselves. So if you're interested in becoming a man of excellence as well, go to fraternityofexcellence.com or you can reach out directly to me to learn more. This episode is brought to you by the Sasquatch Flag Company. The Sasquatch Flag Company is a family-owned business in New England that builds hand-carved American flags from seasoned white pine. Each flag is hand-built and each star on the flag is hand-hammered and chiseled. No two flags are alike. They offer a variety of flag designs to honor the police, military, firefighters, dispatchers, and search and rescue personnel, to name a few. These stunning handmade flags look great in an office, a studio, the back porch, or above the fireplace mantle. They make the perfect gift for the veteran, first responder, or patriot in your life. Now, I love these flags, and I've been giving them as gifts for years, and I was a customer long before they became a sponsor of the show. I can't recommend them enough, so if you're looking for that perfect, uniquely American make gift to give away or if you want to treat yourself go to sasquatchflags.com and get your order in today this episode is brought to you by jeremy clevenger fitness as a high performing leader you know that leadership isn't about telling people what to do it's about leading by example and for most people the one area that they're lacking when it comes to leading by example is their health and fitness by improving your health and fitness every other area of your life improves but how do you get and stay fit as a busy leader well you do what you've always done you hire the best person for the job. Don't struggle on your own. Put Jeremy Clevenger on your team. Jeremy will work with you to take your physique, mindset, nutritional habits, and more to the next level with his step-by-step all-inclusive coaching program. Now, I've worked with Jeremy for the past year, and I'm in the best shape of my life. If you want to step up your game, reach out to Jeremy at apexperformancesystems.com to find out more and get your initial consultation scheduled with him today. And that's part of our human nature, like that kept us alive for for all these you know years. Is our is that we we look out for the the tiger lurking in the dark, or what what could kill us? What could you know? What could get us uh, to where we're isolated from society? These things we worry about, right? And it's just it's in our it's in our it's in who we are. But we have when we recognize that we have that bias, right? Then we know we can sort of turn that off when we get those thoughts, you know. And so I think what you're saying is. When we take a gratitude, a lens of gratitude, it helps kind of dial back that bias a little bit. It, it, it does. And it, we can be aware of it. That's the biggest thing that you said mm-hmm. there, John. I think it is, is I don't think you or I have the power to turn that negative uh, attribution bias off in our, we, we just don't have that. We get, well, maybe some people do. But it's to be aware that it that we have it so that I was at a conference yesterday and I, I, I talked about this negative attribution bias. And, and then I asked folks, imagine that you just got a text right now. And I know you wouldn't check it because you're in this, <laughs> lift, right? And it's your boss. Mm-hmm. And your boss says, I need to talk to you right away. Give me a call. What is the first thing that goes through your mind? We immediately go to the negative and our body actually responds. The physiological response is the same as that tiger that you just talked about. Yeah. And all it is, your boss wants to call and tell you, great job. I'm going to give you a raise. But we just catastrophize it. Yes. Yes. Always. And that's, and that leads to a lot of anxiety. People, you know, I know we're depression, anxiety are, are big problems. And I think anxiety is the one about worrying about the future, worrying about, what's next and what can happen. And like you said, that text comes in, you're like, you start worrying, you know, like, oh, what is that? You know, what is, what now, you know, but it could be something really good. You know, <laughs> we always take that negative bias. Interesting. And, and John, your point though, it is just worth reiterating again, know that we have it. And so that you can, when it happens, when it surfaces, when it pre- presents itself, ah, uh, there, I'm reacting. This is my name. This is the unrelenting force at work. And the more you do that, the quicker you get at noticing it. At least that's what I've noticed as I've been doing it. I notice myself, I catch myself quicker and more often too. So, 
Mm, I like that a lot. In, in the book, you talk about the four mindsets of a leader. I wanted to ask you about that. So what, what are those mindsets? Um, they, they go from surviving to thriving. Okay. Surviving, life is a battleground. Thrive, or, um, striving, life is overwhelming. It's hard, overwhelming hard work. Arriving is where life is good and thriving Life is a playground, not a ground to playground. And you and I, 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 th I think you, all of us, we move between those mindsets at any point in the day as things are happening, as we're, you know, not stepping back, detaching to be able to realize and make sense of the world. And uh, gratitude is a tool that's going to help you and I spend more time in that thriving mindset. Mm. Um. Give us like a like a real world or maybe just an example of what it means to have a gratitude mindset in a given day. So like I run my own business. I came in this morning. We were talking before the show started. I'm going on a conference next week uh, and then I'm going on vacation after that. So I've got a lot of things on my mind, all the things I got to get done. And so I'm in action mode right now. Right. So uh, I got this interview to do. And then I'm in I'm in action. Right. Um, and I'm not thinking gratitude. I'm not actually not thinking um, sur surviving or uh, I'm not thinking any of that. I'm just like, I got all this in my mind that I got have to do. How would gratitude help me if 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 I came in this morning and uh, and thought about and, and, and incorporated gratitude in my day? How would have that been different than kind of the anxiety I have, all the things I've got to get done today? Yeah. Yeah. Um... When I was writing my book in 2018, we got news that uh, four days after our son's 28th birthday, he was going in for a full hip replacement. Oh, wow. Right. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't an accident. It, it, like, they, it's just a weird thing. And he's perfectly fine now, got his hip replaced. And in fact, talking to the nurses there, they said, oh, yeah, we usually get a spring chicken about once a month. Hmm. And leading up to his surgery, you know, I'm trying to write my book. I'm trying to run my business, trying to live a life. My mind would go places, John. I couldn't, I couldn't even speak the things I was thinking. Like, I can share them now. Yeah. But I was thinking things like, what if they just botch his surgery and he is in more pain and like more that has a lower quality of life as, as a result of it? What if, what if he bleeds out on the table? Mm. Like, I, like it's, you can almost say totally irrational. Yeah. This is the unrelenting force, right? And I just, I, I mean, I couldn't tell Linda this, my, like I couldn't speak that. And so I just, I don't, I'm writing my book at this time. So imagine <laughs> the distraction this is to my life. Yeah. And, and you know what I said? Hold it. What am I grateful for in this situation? And I pulled out my pen and I started writing. I'm grateful that the surgeon is going to do his surgery. Done this thousands of times. One of the best in the country. That Nick was able to, to schedule the surgery. You know, we got a lot of wait times. He was able to schedule it conveniently because he was finishing up school to, to make it work for him. I'm grateful that he's no longer going to be in pain. I'm grateful that his physical health is in such a way that he's going to recover really easily. I'm grateful that his attitude is one of solution. He's gone out. He's got himself the walkers, system aids he's going to need. I'm grateful for his wife, Kelsey, who's going to be there to support him. I'm grateful for this hip technology that is advancing so much. I mean, he's probably going to need another one, but maybe just one. Mm. I read it. And then I took that list and I put it up on my computer. I still have it in my office here. I look at that list. And it's like taking a deep breath, John. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I would... You're, someone could say, Steve, that's ridiculous thinking he's going to die getting a hip replaced. I know, but that's what I was doing. But yeah. gratitude, that tool, that simple, okay, 
I'm able to make sense of this now. It didn't, I don't, I'm not glad he had his hip replaced, right? But the resources that it enabled me to tap into. So I was able to find the good there. Is that a good example for you? I, I mean, I, I use that one a lot. It was just very powerful for me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, I think you're right. Um, is is it a conscious choice that we, do we, is it something that um, we do every morning? Is it something that, we, or is it just in the moment where we feel those, you know, those thoughts creeping in? Uh, it, it, you know, because I, that, that's what I was just kind of talking about. It, it, or the idea is it's something that, like first thing in the morning, we should think about all the things we're happy or grateful for, or is it something more in the moment where you get stuck and having those, you feel those dark thoughts coming in. You're like, I, I need to take a break here. I need to back up and think differently. I'm just curious. Yes. The process. It's, it's both. Okay. So the, the big idea in the book, develop a gratitude practice. Mm. Um, two big habits I promote, making a list. Don't just think about it, record it, the extra, the, the kinetic, the movement, physical sense involved in it. It, uh, it has a greater impact. Make a list. And science right now doesn't matter whether it's morning, noon, night, whatever works for you. And I couldn't tell you the last time I went a day with, without making a list, probably 13, 14, 15 years. And, and 10 years ago, I tripped into a second habit, which is a game changer consume other people's gratitudes, read and listen to what other people are grateful for. It's like thinking of tuning into the good news, the news about the uh, good yeah. in the world, right? And just read or listen to what others are grateful for. So I, I love that idea. And I, and I sense myself doing that as well. I, I like that idea because I, because I was thinking about this morning where I've got a lot of things on my plate. And as I mentioned, and uh, a lot of anxiety about what's happening over the next three weeks with my business and my travel and all that. But then my son, who's in the Navy, is in Norway right now. And he's he's sending me pictures of of what he's doing today in Norway. And I'm like, that's so cool that he's in Norway. And my wife, who's a teacher, today's her last day of school for the summer. And she's having a party today with all of her children. And I'm like, so, you know, like I said, I'm 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 you you say you take the gratitude on for for others that are experiencing, you know, and it's kind of like uh yeah, enjoying sort of living vicariously through their uh, experiences today, right? It does. And when you tell stories, I know you like to tell stories. Yeah. The way you tell your story, the lesson that you are illustrating for me, you're doing it in a way, but you're not saying, Steve, you should do this. Yeah. You are inspiring Steve to connect with your story and learn from it and take it on my own. And when we read someone else's gratitudes or, or, or consume other people's gratitudes, no one is saying you should be grateful for those peas. There's people in the world that don't have them. Just eat your supper and be grateful. Right. That doesn't work, right? Right. So shared experiences are really, really powerful and gratitude shared experiences. It, it's been a game changer for really, John. Yeah, I love it. What, when you do this, when you, when you have, uh, you take a, grateful mindset, you become a grateful leader. How does that change you in terms of what's your life like when you are more grateful? It's, it, you know, for me, just a greater sense of calm, of feeling like, literally feeling like life is a playground. Mm. Prior to this whole gratitude, I was a positive person. I, I was, I, it wasn't like I went from this to the, like there wasn't the, but I, it totally changed how I make sense of the world. I would, um, and, and being less judgmental, I would go from the panhandler, get a job. You want money? You get a job mm. to realizing man, that could be like, what separates us? Who, who knows? I've been just so fortunate to offer some, I now have a policy. If somebody asks me for money, you're getting some or everything that I've got in my pocket. Mm. Just a response and gratitude. And, you know, that's my experience. The science, it tells us some of these similar things. Happier, more connected, just mm. feeling a greater sense of life 
satisfaction. And that can be really hard when you're dealing with a lot of crap too, right? Mm. Um, and so I, I don't ever tell someone you should be grateful, but just when you've got dealing with a bunch of crap, like me, when Nick was having his surgery done, just, I think it's, it serves us well to ask the question, where's the good here? What might, what might I be grateful for? And to me, it was like taking a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely see that for sure. Um, you've got something on your website called perpetual gratitude. What is that? It, it is one of the things gratitude is it's simple, but it's not easy. So one of the ways you can keep gratitude alive, I've got a, a, a year long program where once a week, you get a, a video uh, with a story. I love stories too, with a story and a point and a challenge. And it's really meant for organizations that want to really embrace and infuse gratitude within their culture, within their organization, where people get a, a you know a weekly reminder. It's just a bit of a, a nudge to help them with their gratitude practice and a practical tool that they can use in their in their workplace. I love it. I love it. And that's on the website. And uh, that's on the website. all right. Um, what final message would you like to leave with our listeners today? Gratitude is simple. It's not always easy because life gets in the way. Mm. You've got trade shows you got to prepare for and then going on vacation. Like you John, it happens. Yeah. And like this. So find some trigger or an accountability uh, partner who can help you with your gratitude practice. So build a gratitude practice. Uh, if you sign up for the daily gratitudes on our website, you'll get an email from me five days a week, each weekday morning. That that can be a nudge for you just to keep your gratitude practice alive. I love it. So reminders, uh, having someone to be accountable with, uh, all these things can help us uh, to stay on track with yeah. a, with a grateful mindset versus uh, a negative mindset or a woe is me mindset, you know? So yeah, yeah fantastic. So um, this is great, Steve. How can people find out more about you, uh, your services and your book? Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, John. Uh, our website, gratitudeatwork.ca uh, and happy to connect with, uh, with, with you on LinkedIn. Just send me a LinkedIn connection and happy to connect with you there as well, too. Uh, fantastic. And we'll go ahead and put uh, links in the show notes for those resources. And I highly do encourage you leaders as you're listening into this uh, to think about what Steve is talking about with respect to gratitude. And if it's something that's really resonating with you, definitely reach out to him, go on the website, get get on these, uh, get on the daily email uh, and kind of remind you that, uh, you know, to, to stay on the right track with respect to, to gratitude. Steve, I really appreciate you coming on the show. And sharing this is a great perspective. It's given us a lot to think about. And I appreciate your time today and sharing all, all this information. John, I appreciate you inviting me on the show. This is your show. Thank you very much. You're a gracious host. Well, thanks again. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. If you're a working professional wondering what's next for your career, you've come to the right place. Whether you're looking for a promotion, growth, or a potential career transition, look no further. With over 30 years working in a variety of industries, I share my insider knowledge with those ready to get ahead on Career Advancement with Craig Ansell. Tune in to get your strategies for success. 
Hey there, fabulous souls. I'm Stephanie Baklaan. And I'm Eden Alpert. And we're the hosts of the brand new podcast, Unapologetically Fab. Get ready to join us on an amazing and real journey as we dive into life after 40 and own it. We're all about changing the narrative, leaning into who you are, and living a life by your own design. Join us as we embrace life unapologetically and redefine success. This is Unapologetically Fab. An electric cast production. See you there. Electric cast.